One of the most important additions to Java 8 feature list is the introduction of optional objects. Well, it's been a matter of debate whether to use optional objects or not, but I'll try to give my argument and discuss the cases where the usage of optional objects are really great. Like any other major programming languages, Java uses a special value called null to indicate the absence of a value. In fact, we are so obsessed with the value null that we see it everywhere in the code. All the field members of an object are automatically initialized to null. An often programmer uses the value null to initialize an object if he doesn't have the value at first. Well, it's great that Java allows you to represent the absence of a value with what is called null. On the other hand, having nulls in your code is like time bomb waiting to explode in the production. And it's also pretty hard to recognize at first. If you assign a null value to an object, And when you try to dereference the object, you'll get what is known as a null pointer exception. Here I'm trying to initialize a null to an object of employee and trying to access a method called getName. And if I try to execute this method, you'll get a null pointer exception because this employee is doesn't refer to any actual object. We would like to avoid this kind of exception that could potentially make your application crash. Now imagine you want to write a method that returns an employee with a given name from a given list. You would typically end up writing this piece of code. This get employee by name which takes the list as a first argument and the name as a second argument. You would try to iterate the whole list and check for each instance of employee whether it equals the given name or not. If it equals, you return the instance or else you return the null. And for example, get employees by name, I would want to access Chris. And if you try to execute this program, you'll get the age of the Chris, that is 26. Now, but the problem is negative scenarios. What if, if you give some other name which is not there in the list? In which case you return the null. For example, I'll give you some other name, for example, Hemant. And if I try to execute this program, you'll get the null pointer exception because there is no Hemant in this list, hence I return the null. And you end up getting the null, which in turn you are calling a method on null. Well, you could argue that the caller must check for a null check before accessing. And guess what? You're absolutely right. It's a responsibility of the caller to check for the null values. But the thing is, it is not very clear from the API perspective whether the method returns the null or not. In other words, mostly programmers would not even know that there will be some cases where null is returned. So in these cases, we end up getting the null pointer exceptions. And just to make the problem even more worse, Often the line which throws the null pointer exception is not the origin of the real problem. In fact, it could be anywhere in the code. In the real world, you might not even have the access to the source code of an API. In that case, it's really, really difficult to find the bug. For example, you got the null pointer exception at Java 21 line, and but the real problem exists in the line number 34, you know. So the Java developers thought it would be great if you can create the context where a possible absence of value can be returned. So this is where optional objects comes into picture. Optional objects are great. If you had to rewrite this whole implementation using op optional objects, we would end up writing something like this. The method does pretty much the same, get employee by name. It accepts the first argument list of employee and the second argument name. And in this case, you iterate every employee and check for the employee with a given name. If the match is found, you construct an optional object using this instance or else you construct an optional with empty. Now, it's pretty evident from the API perspective that the method can actually return the absence of a value. Now, the, in other words, the guy who wrote the code explicitly mentions that, hey, I might throw a null. Please be aware of that. Now, the caller now the caller knows that there could be a potential absence of value 
so he never forgets to check the presence of a value before accessing it for example here there's a quiz list i want to access his age now i'll get the output now if i try to give some other name which is not there in the list and i try to execute it i i, I won't get the null pointer exception because is present will be false and some other code will get executed now you could counter argue that we could return a null from a method which returns the optional objects i know it's not a perfect solution but i would expect programmers to stick to the convention of not passing the null references where an optional object is expected there are also pretty good methods on optional objects please make sure that you check on them to get the most of the optional objects that's it guys see you in the next video